Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Ito po si Cesar Ordonez and welcome to my channel. In this video, pag-uusapan po natin ang Cash Disbursement Journal. This will be our third video on our free bookkeeping tutorial. So sana po nakapag-subscribe na po kayo sa ating channel at na-hit nyo na rin po yung bell button para po ma-notify po kayo sa mga susunod na videos. Okay, so pag-usapan po natin ito. Cash Disbursement Journal, as I mentioned during our introduction, dito po natin nire-record yun pong ating mga payments. So lahat po ng binayaran, dito po natin siya makikita. And anong form po yung kailangan nating tutukan in dealing with our payments? That is your check voucher. Sa check voucher po, dyan po natin makikita lahat ng details ng atin pong binayaran. Kung sino po yung binayaran natin, kung kailan po nakadate yung check, kung ano po yung check number, kung magkano po yung amount, kung para saan, and the like. Okay, so ito po yung ating dokumento na magagamit natin in creating our cash disbursement journal. Okay, so before we proceed to our sample transactions, konting disclaimer lamang po, lahat po ng ating pong makikitang transactions ay wala pong katotohanan. Hindi po yan tunay na nangyari. At kung nangyari man po talaga, yan po ay nagkataon lamang at hindi sinasadya. Sige po, so let's proceed. So, ito po yung itsura ng ating cash disbursement journal. You have still here the name of the company. Yan pong pangalan ng book. And also, uh, yun pong mga details. So, very similar po yan sa cash receipt journal. Yun nga lang, kung yung cash receipt journal, yung pong pera ay pumasok, dito po ay lumabas. Okay? At dito po, makikita po natin, lahat po ng nakalista ay mga expenses. As opposed to cash receipts, kasi po, yung nakalista po doon ay mga income. Okay? So, simulan po natin sa unang transaction. On March 3, 2020, under CV20-03-001, nagbayad po tayo kay New Office Supply Store. Yan. So, binayaran po natin siya. And what is that for? Purchase of office supply. So, nagbayad tayo ng 10,000, saan po napunta? Sa supplies. On March 3, under CV20-03-002, nagbayad po tayo kay Office Equipment Incorporated. And what is that for? Purchase of Office Equipment. Nagbayad po tayo sa kanya ng 60,000, saan po napunta? Office Equipment. Okay. So, ito po yung mga normally binibili ng isang business pag nagsisimula. Although, Hindi lang naman po talaga yan lahat ng mga binayaran ng isang business. Kasama pa dyan syempre yung mga taxes, permits, licenses, at mga other regulatory fees na binayaran. Okay? But for simplicity purposes, ito lang po muna yung nilista ko. Sa susunod po na transaction, on March 15, mayroon po tayong binayaran kay Mary Masipag. What is that for? Salary. So, yan po yung kanyang uh, sahod sa first cut-off. Nagbayad po tayo sa kanya ng 14,500, although ang talagang expense natin ay 15,000. Kasi po, yung we need hold po natin sa kanya na 500, for simplicity purposes, ito po yung SSS, Phil Health, and Pag-ibig. Na, yung 500 po na yan, meron po tayong duty na i-remit sa uh, bawat government, government agency kung saan sila nararapat. Kung sa SSS ba, Phil Health, or Pag-ibig. Yung sumunod na transaction ay ganun din lamang po uh, kay Mary Masipag. Salary naman po niyan sa second cut-off. So, same lang din po yung amount at uh, ganun na lang din po yung aking explanation. Now, for the last two transaction, uh, on March 31, may binayaran po tayo kay Mura Rent Here. And what is that for? Monthly Rent Payment. Okay, so nagbayad po tayo ng 19,000 pesos. Although, ang expense natin ay 20,000. Why? Because if you are renting a space to be used in your business, you are required to withhold 5% of the total amount. So, 5% ng 20,000, 1,000, we need hold po natin yan. And in the same way, kagaya po nung napag-usapan natin sa cash receipt journal, ito po, bilang uh, payor this time, we have the duty to remit that with the BIR. Okay? So, kaya po hindi natin binabayaran ng buo. And lastly, on March 31, 2020, under CV20-03-006, nagbayad po tayo kay Banco de Tatay. Or this transaction is ano, ha, very familiar kasi 
if you can still remember during our discussion sa cash receipt journal, na-encounter na po natin si Banco de Tatay. So, what is this for ba? Sabi dito, that is the payment for or payment of loan and interest. 10,500. But, as we look at it, meron siyang dalawang pinuntahan. Yung ating binayaran ay kabawasan sa loan at at the same time, interest. Kasi po, yung 10,000 kabawasan sa ating utang and at the same time, yung 500 naman na tubo na binayaran natin, that becomes our expenses for borrowing the money. Okay, so yung isa po nilagay natin sa expense, then yung isa po ay binawas natin sa liability. Okay, so ganito lamang po maggawa uh, ng cash disbursement journal. Okay? So, yung pong natitira nating books, yung ating general journal at saka general ledger, uh, pag po in-explain natin siya, ididikit na rin po natin yung cash receipt at the same time itong cash disbursement journal dahil meron po silang participation sa general ledger. And sometimes sa uh, general uh, journal na rin. Okay? So, para mas maintindihan natin siya, ikakabit na po natin ito lahat sa susunod nating video. Okay? So, that's all for now. Thank you so much for listening. And see you on our next video. Salamat po.